A lot of people believe there's intelligent life out there, but when a top Harvard astronomer with four books and more than 700 publications on space says he thinks so too, it might be time to listen. That's exactly what happened last year when Avi Loeb and his partner suggested this fast-moving, cigar-like rock dubbed Oumuamua, or something close to that, could be a probe from another world. It was first discovered in 2017 when it was moving so fast that it escaped our sun's gravitational pull, becoming the first interstellar object ever spotted in our solar system. Then something weird happened. It sped up even more, changed direction. So was it an alien encounter, or sometimes is a cigar-like comet just a cigar-like comet? Avi Loeb joins me now. It's good to see you. Good Pronounce it for me first. Oumuamua. Much better than I did. So every single story I read on this, Avi, said this is the first object we've seen in our solar system that comes from outside our right. solar system. How do we know that? Because it moves too fast to be bound to the sun. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like having a guest for dinner that comes from another country. It saves you the trip. But we found out about it only when it was out the door into the dark street, so we didn't learn as much as we want to. But uh, it did look very strange, nothing like we have seen before from within the solar system. So how is it different from all other space objects that we have seen before? Well, first of all, it has an, a very extreme shape mm -hmm. that is at least 10 times longer than it is wide. Uh, we don't know if it's a cigar-shaped or a pancake-shaped object. Actually, a pancake is much more likely based on the tumbling motion that it shows. Uh, but then, in addition, uh, it deviated from an orbit based on the sun's gravity. And so there was an extra push uh, that uh, was exerted on it. And it doesn't look like a comet in the sense that there is no cometary no tail. tail. Right. right. So usually for comets, they get an extra push as a result of outgassing through the rocket effect. So where did the push come from? That's what we tried to explain in our paper. And we suggested the only other interpretation that I could have made sense of is perhaps sunlight is pushing on it. And the situation is similar to a sail on a sailboat where the wind is bouncing off the sail, and as a result, the sail is being pushed. But the uh, sun serves the same purpose you're suggesting, yes. potentially, in this? The light itself bounces off the object and pushes it, and this is called a light sail. Uh, the object needs to be very thin, less than a millimeter in thickness, but we are currently developing this technology. Uh, and to be used here? to be used for space uh, propulsion. The advantage of it is that you don't carry the fuel with you, as you do with uh, chemical rockets. And as a result of that, you can uh, uh, launch uh, a spacecraft to a speed that is a fraction of the speed of light. So, for example, if we want to visit the nearest star, which is four light years away, uh -huh. within our lifetime, we need to push the spacecraft to a fraction of the speed of light. And that's only possible with light itself. Do you still get excited? by these things like mere mortals do when we see these things? Oh, I get very excited. Yeah. I think it's the most exciting question that we can ask. Are we alone? Well, I want to get to are we alone in a minute. Get back to your thesis for a minute. It, you don't know, though, even if you're right, whether it's debris from something created uh, by some other life form or if it was intentionally set here, some sort of probe. You, don't, you can't make that distinction, We cannot correct? make the distinction and we cannot also tell when maybe it's uh, natural in origin uh, and was constructed in some nursery that we are not familiar with, that is not similar to the solar system. Okay, if uh, I had uh, somewhere near the level of expertise you did and I wanted to debunk your thesis, what's the weakest part of your your theory here? That it's less than a millimeter thick. And, and that it couldn't survive interstellar tra oh, travel no. as a result? That actually is something we addressed in our paper, and we showed that it would survive the lengthy journey through the interstellar space. So why is the thickness then a suspect uh, uh, argument? Because it requires an artificial origin. Oh, and many people have a prejudice and prefer not to consider, not to put it on the table. They say it's never aliens. You know, as you know very well, many of your peers who have great respect for you have criticized you uh, relentlessly. Right. And uh, a guy who I have here pretty regularly, who I am very fond of, Kelly Beatty from Sky and Telescope magazine, he was here in November shortly after we heard about this. He disagreed with you, too. Here's what Kelly had to say. We really have no explanation, but, you know, just because we don't have an explanation doesn't mean it's an alien spaceship. Yeah, but, uh, I'm going to quote the great Carl Sagan, who yes. said, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Do we have it? Do you have it? I agree with that. 
uh, we are not making an extraordinary claim. We are not saying it must be of artificial origin. We are saying let's put this possibility on the table and as we do in science, collect more evidence perhaps on the next guess that we have. Uh, so many, why are so many of your uh, colleagues, peers, why are they so averse to that sort of thing? Let me be clear. They don't deny that there's a huge mathematical probability that there is life not wildly unlike ours somewhere out there, right? I mean, the math right. suggests that it's not only probable, but likely, yes? Right. Uh, I don't think it's a speculation that we are not uh, alone because a quarter of all the stars have a planet of the size of the Earth with a similar surface temperature to that of the Earth so that you can have liquid water and the chemistry of life as we know it. And therefore, if you roll the dice billions of times, What's the chance that we are special, that we are unique? I think anyone that claims that we are the only ones shows arrogance. And my premise is based on modesty. I think we should assume that what we see here exists elsewhere. And let's search for it. Do you think, uh, what are the odds if you're a betting person that you're right and your critics are wrong? Oh, I think it's very likely that uh, there is life out there. The question is, is this particular object or other objects debris from an artificial origin of some mm -hmm. technology out there. Do you have any concept and we are lying in bed or sitting in your office about what that life might look like? Well, I think we would be shocked to find out. Uh, the situation would be similar to presenting a cell phone to a caveman. Uh, and the caveman would look at it and think, oh, it must be a piece of stone, you know, a, a rock. Um, he wouldn't be able to figure out what it its purpose is. And so uh, our technology is currently evolving on a three-year time scale uh, exponentially. And so if you go a thousand years into the future, we won't be able to actually understand what technology of the future looks like. And so I think we would be shocked to see a civilization that is more mature than we are. But the good news is we have currently the technology to figure out if we are the smartest kid on the block. Mm -hmm. We can look out for debris that, even though we might not understand, would look as if it's not natural. Are you a science fiction fan? No. I, I didn't. <laughs> I don't like science fiction. I didn't think so. You're a science fact kind of guy. Exactly. I, when I see science fiction that, is not, uh, that does not follow the laws of physics, I have a problem with that. And uh, I cannot enjoy it. And so I like science and I like fiction separately, but I don't like the mix. I enjoy this. Uh, Avi, it's a pleasure. Really pleasure. good to meet you. Thank you so much.